Today we're looking at the M114 Armoured Command and Reconnaissance Vehicle. This little vehicle was used alongside the M113, however they had no similar components between the two vehicles. Designed by Cadillac in 1961, went into production between uh, 1962 and 1963. The initial contract looked at about just over 1,200 vehicles in all three models, M114, the A1 and the A2. It's a light armoured vehicle, so it only comes in at about 6.8 tonnes. It is air portable and it is amphibious, so it can swim at about five and a half kilometres an hour. To aid it in its swimming, have what we would call a trim vane, but in the manual it's actually called a surfboard. It's operated by the driver. There's a lock nut which he undoes just up here and then he pushes forward on the handle because this is laid flat and it comes out and then it displaces water around the vehicle as it swims. The only problem they had with this vehicle early on is this overhang just here. Unlike the M113 which has its track right up front, this one has an overhang. So as it's actually going into a creek line or trying to come out, it would literally wedge itself in on the ground. So it did have that problem where it was, uh, had very poor mobility coming in and out of uh, creek lines. Essentially we come out with two different types of track. Now these are all bolted together. Now we can see that these ones have four pins. Early ones had an extra pin in here and the, uh, the tension uh, of these pins uh, was a lot lower than what this newer track is. So now we have the, the four pins. So the bolts are actually uh, tightened up to a higher foot pound rating. So each track link or section is 81 centimetres long. It has eight sections per length and it's 10 sections per track. So this is the latest style of track for this vehicle. The earlier tracks were good for about uh, 1,600 kilometres before they had to be replaced. Torsion bar suspension, four road wheels, and at the back, similar to how we would tension a M113, we have a grease-filled cylinder, which is where we're just pumping grease and this tensions the track. The engine in here is a Chevy V8 petrol engine, puts out about 160 horsepower, so it can propel this vehicle at about 58 kilometres an hour. It has a Allison transmission, so this is four speeds forward, one in reverse, but it also has a high and low range gear. Uh, this just uses its track, same as the M113, to propel itself through the water. Armour on this is the same composition as the M113, so it's the uh, what we call the 5083, so it's a combination of aluminium and magnesium up to about 5%. On the front here, this vehicle was said to take up to, or what they wanted to take up to was a 30 millimetre cannon across the whole frontal arc. The upper hull here is at about 32 millimetres thick, but it's angled back at about 70 degrees. So it gives us roughly the equivalent to about 88 millimetres of armour just on the front. Uh, on the lower part here, we're at about uh, 45 millimetres. On the sides at zero degrees, we're at the same uh, 32 millimetres of thickness. Another problem with this vehicle was its hull. Where they found in Vietnam when they took these along with the M113s, the M113 could sustain a blast from a mine to some degree, where this one had very poor survivability uh, if it got hit by a mine. Even though this is a later vehicle, so this is actually what we call an A1, this has the early style cupola. So we have the split hatch and we have a pintle mounted 50 calibre machine gun. It's fully rotatable. When we go into the proper A1 variant, the commander can sit and operate the 50 caliber machine gun from inside, and the cupola went to one round hatch, which pulled back as opposed to the split hatch. When we get into A2s, we can fit a Hispano 20 millimeter cannon. And if we go into later variants where we go back to the T114, we can mount a 106 recoilless rifle. Now on the back, we can see this mount here. This houses a M60 machine gun. So we can carry about 3,000 rounds on the back and it's uh, operated by the uh, observer who can stick his head out here. 50 calibre holds about 1,000 rounds. You can see the clamps on the back and I've just got a, uh, an M72 66mm short range anti-armour weapon so it can hold three. So it does give it that anti-armour capability. But again with the uh, 66 you're probably looking at it about 200 metres of range uh, on that weapon. Now in the back here it is quite cramped unless there's seat belts fitted. You're sitting on the floor, your legs are out, you get a lot of vibration, and if you hit a mine, you're uh, gonna get bounced around quite considerably. So probably not really good ergonomics wise for the two crewmen that can sit in here. This position here is for the commander. 
So he has his seat there with the folding back and forward of him is the driver. Now you can see he has a, a steering bar, uh, very similar to what's in the uh, M41 Walk Bulldog. So he just turns it on his right hand side. That's where his gear quadrant is. Uh, can also fit a infrared periscope in the box to his left. Now the Australians trialed this as part of the number six tropical trials unit, which they conducted at Innisfail, which is about an hour south of Cairns. They trialled this in 1964. The two vehicles are actually named Vampire and Vandal. But during those trials, one of those vehicles ended up on its roof. So maybe they should have renamed it the Turtle. The vehicles were deemed to have not been sufficiently useful for what the Australian Army was looking for. So they uh, didn't buy these vehicles as part of the, uh, the trials. So in closing, wasn't a very successful vehicle. Only stayed in service for about 10 years in the regular Army although it did see service right up until about 1980. So if you want to come and see this vehicle, come and visit us at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum.